God, you are the one that we love and worship. We are your blood-bought church. And we come to you, Lord, in the name of our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. And we come in the power of the third person of the Trinity, the Holy Spirit. And we come into the holy, holy, holy presence of God our Father to worship him today. The Trinity, the three in one. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Lord, we love each part of the Trinity. God is God. Lord, we are so blessed to be a part of the church, the body of Christ. Lord, dwelt by the Holy Spirit, sealed by the Holy Spirit, baptized by the Holy Spirit, and filled with the Holy Spirit is our desire, O oh God. You're filling upon us even now in these days. God, that you would uh, have a message for my heart again and for the heart of each one. And God, that each one of us who are here this morning would leave here having been encouraged, having been maybe challenged to uh, come closer to you in the new year ahead of us and to stay close to our Lord Jesus Christ and to live in the power of the Holy Spirit every day. So I pray for your church here this morning. Please help us, O oh God to walk closer to you, to be more holy as you are holy, to be more loving as you are loving, to be more patient as you are patient, to be more honest and truthful, Lord, as you are, to be less of ourselves and more of you in these days, God, we pray, and that we would do all we can to lift up the name of Jesus wherever we go, that we would be that shining light to those around us, especially to those who need you draw people to yourself. And Lord, I pray a special prayer for John, John Higgins and John's family today, having lost a family member just recently. Lord, I pray for this family of John's and Lord, you know all the details of this individual's passing and God, you know his name, you know every detail about him and you know every need of John's family at this time. Please bring them to seek Jesus in their lives and they would find him in a new and fresh way and they would experience his comfort right now Lord that they would they would experience his peace so we pray for the family that's left behind God and help us all Lord to live as though you were to return today help us all to live as though Lord we have no guarantee of tomorrow when life could pass from us at any moment no guarantees and that all of us would be ready for that appointed time the Bible says that there's an appointed time for each and every one of us to die. And so, Lord, we pray that we would be ready. God, we pray. Now, your blessing upon your word to our hearts here this morning. We give you the care of praise. Indeed, you are deserving of it all. In Jesus' name, amen. A good news, New Year's resolution for the Christian could be to read through the Gospels. That's one of my New Year's resolutions. Whether you get hung up in resolutions or not, I think there are some resolutions that we all need to get hung up with, really, uh, personally, as Christians, as followers of Jesus. So I started to read through the Gospels in my new chronological study Bible that was given as a gift in the evenings. I'm reading through the Gospels in the evenings. Most evenings, Nancy and I put on Daystar, the evenings that we're both home, put on Daystar, which has been a lot lately, and uh, Daystar and the Reflections uh, program that's on there, which is basically some quiet instrumental with beautiful uh, scenery and scripture on it, and we have that on uh, very quietly, and we read scripture personally and for about a half hour, and then we read a good Christian book for maybe another half hour, and then we listen to our daily bread uh, on our digital devices, and uh, the daily bread and the readings, and then we pray together. That's just kind of what we do. We watch very little TV, uh, or are on the computer or other things, very little. <laughs> and um, we, we believe strongly in the Word of God. And uh, so that's why we like to listen to it and read it and listen to it. And I invite you to do the same this new year, 2023. If you're not in the habit of doing those things, I invite you to do them. I always say a family or a slash couple that reads the Word together the Word of God together and praise together stays together. I really believe that. I believe statistics will prove that out very accurately. A couple or a family that reads the Word of God, or individual for that matter, and prays will 
stay together. Those 20 minutes or so will do more to keep your marriage together than anything else could ever do in your life. Can you imagine if we each lived the gospel portions that we read? 100%? How much of our lives would change? We just lived the gospels. Can you imagine if we turned off the television or electronic devices, our Facebook, our electronic gaming, etc., for just 30 minutes every day and read our Bibles? How much our lives would change dramatically? My life, your life would change radically if I just lived one parable of Jesus or one teaching from Jesus out of the four Gospels, 100%. Enough. May I suggest to you that there is a gapping hole between my life and the life Jesus invites me to live in the Gospels? Despite this gap, I still consider myself a disciple of Jesus. Being, being Christian, you see, is not being perfect. We're just forgiven, right? We're not perfect. We're far from it. But there is one who is perfect, and that is Jesus. And that's who we need to keep our eyes on, not others, for sure. Membership among the followers of Jesus does not require perfection. In case we were wondering that, it doesn't. That's a good thing because none of us would achieve it, right? But it does require us to live as Jesus lived. Amen? To live as Jesus lived in the Gospels. And that means working diligently to close the gap to where I should be as a follower of Jesus Christ from where I am today. So the question for us is how do we work on closing that gap? You know how we do it? By getting closer to Jesus. By getting closer to Jesus. The closer you get to Jesus, the closer that gap comes. Right? Think of it. Throughout Jesus' life, we witness one person after another clamoring to see Jesus. Read through the gospel. So many were clamoring to see Jesus, or coming to see Jesus, or climbing to see Jesus. You remember we Zacchaeus, the tax collector? Remember, he climbed a tree to see Jesus, even. And, and, and they're coming to Jesus to get closer to Jesus. Of course, one of the most powerful examples of this in Scripture is a woman who had been suffering for 12 years with an illness. And she says, if I can just touch his or Jesus' garment or his cloak, I will be made well. In Matthew 9, 21, she just wanted to be close to Jesus and just touch his garment. And we know the story, of course, she did. And healing virtues went out of Jesus in that crowd, and that woman was healed because she wanted to get close to Jesus and just touch him. When was the last time you went out of your way get close to Jesus. When was the last time you went out of your way to get close to Jesus? Oh yeah, we want to get close to this person, we want to get close to that person, and that's fine. But when was the last time I really passionately wanted to get close to Jesus in my life? If you want to stay warm, it is best to stay close to the fire. You want to stay warm. If you want to live a Christian life, it is best to stay close to Jesus. So the title of today's New Year's message, obviously, is obviously staying close to Jesus in 2023. How many of you want to close that gap and stay close to Jesus in 2023? Amen. Sure we do. Amen. So let me share with you four practical procedures needed to stay close to Jesus in 2023 and beyond. Not just for this year, but year after year. And these procedures, if you would, and if, and if they're followed, procedures are no good if we don't follow them, right? If these procedures are followed, can have a beautiful and a radical impact on your life. <coughs> Procedure number one. Delve into the Gospels. Delve into the Gospels. Bible teacher and author Matthew Kelly tells a story of how when at the age of 15, 
a godly Christian man who would later become his spiritual mentor gave him an old Bible that he had had. And he encouraged Matthew Kelly to read the Bible. More specifically, he encouraged him to read the Gospels. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And this young man, Matthew, had, had heard stories read at church each week. But he, stories about Jesus and the Gospels, but he had never read the Gospels for himself. Not even one of them. According to Statista Media, I think I got that right, in 2020, I didn't have the 2022 uh, statistic, but in 2020, 30, get this now, 34% of Christians never read their Bibles. That is shocking, is it not? 34% never read their Bibles, let alone the Gospels, right? Of over 2 billion Christians in the world, less than 30% will ever read through the entire Bible. That's disturbing, isn't it? The fact is, over 82% of Christian Canadians only read their Bibles on Sunday while at church. Wow. That's scary. If that's all they read their Bibles, right? And of the extremely disturbing reasons why Christians don't read their Bible is only 22% of them believe the Bible is fully inspired by God himself and was written by men who were divinely appointed by the Lord Almighty. Did you get that? Here's the other way of stating that statistic that makes it even more alarming. 78% of Christians do not believe the Bible is God's word and is fully inspired by God himself and written by men divinely appointed by God. Unbelievable, isn't it? What do they do with verses like 2 Timothy 3.16 that says this? All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, instruction, and righteousness that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped, furnished for every good verse or good work. Or verses like this one in uh, 2 Peter. Chapter 1, verse 20, knowing the first that no prophecy of Scripture is of, my, of, of any private interpretation, for prophecy never came by the will of man, but holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. And we wonder why many Christians don't read their Bibles. And they don't seek to obey its teachings. Well, there's one of the major reasons right there. They don't believe it to be God's Word. They don't believe it to be inspired and infallible written Word of God to man. They just believe it's another book. What a crime, if you will. So the probing question then is, have you read the Bible through? Have you ever really read the Gospels? Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Even one of them before. Sadly, some Christians have never read one gospel through in their entire lives. And we wonder why Jesus seems way out there. We wonder why that gap seems so big. And there's no closeness to Jesus. We wonder why. Do you see why we, the church, need revival in this 21st century? Amen? Amen. That's why we need revival. That's why we pray for revival. We're believing God for revival. Dear people, you want to stop this crime of not believing the Bible is the word of God? Do you want to stop that crime, if you would? Then get to know Jesus more. Get to know Jesus through reading the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And then stay close to Jesus as you discover who Jesus is. Through reading the Gospels, you'll get to know who he is. You'll get to discover that he's God himself in a body, the second person of the Trinity. You discover that he's the perfect son of God. You discover that he's the greatest miracle worker ever and the greatest teacher ever. And he's the savior of the world who came to lay down his life on a cross for you and rise again the third day so that all who come to him and repent of sin might have salvation and eternal life through believing in Jesus Christ. We read in John 3.36, He who believes in the Son has everlasting life. 
he who does not believe the Son of God shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. So here's a challenge. If you want to get to know Jesus and stay close to Jesus, read or listen to even on your devices or whatever, the Gospels for 15 minutes every day. 15 minutes every day. And allow the life and the teachings of Jesus to sink their roots deep into your soul and into your life. This will help you get beyond any vague familiarity with the Gospels and develop a living and a breathing and a practical intimacy with Jesus. So my dear brother, my dear sister in Christ, if you make reading and reflecting on the Gospels a daily habit in your life, in time it will become a touchstone of inspiration and solace like nothing else can in your life. So dear ones, find a place, <clears throat> excuse me, where you can be still and where you can be quiet. <laughs> and I know that's hard in this society that we live in to find a place where we can be quiet and be still, but do it. Just turn off all your devices for 20 minutes and decide a certain time every day to do it that is set apart just for reading the Gospels and develop a routine for this daily habit and allow it to become an immovable part of your day. Procedure number two, have a focused time of prayer every day. Have a focused time of prayer every day. How many believe prayer changes everything, right? Prayer does. Prayer changes everything. What, why don't we pray more then? You ever thought about that? If we believe it changes everything, why don't we pray more? As we proceed to get close to Jesus and stay close to Him, it will not happen. It will not happen without developing an intimate daily conversation with Jesus. We stop everything and allow humbly in God's presence and you pray even for 10 minutes, 15 minutes, whatever time you can get, and you stop and you pray and you just talk with God. What a difference that will make in your life. We're talking here about a scheduled prayer time. Or a divine appointment with God, if you would. Versus a spontaneous prayer, which is needed too. And we'll talk a bit about that. Just as you book appointments on your calendar or on your electronic device, whether doctor's appointments or car appointments or hair appointments or kids events that you're marking down or birthday events, whatever. So I need to schedule in on my calendar an appointment with God, right? That should be our number one appointment every day, our time with God. So church, every day we need to set a time, aside a time exclusively for prayer if we're going to get close to Jesus. In 2023 and beyond. Do you remember the powerful movie, The War Room? Any of you remember that movie? Yeah. What a powerful movie. One of the most powerful movies I've ever seen that impacted my life. <laughs> and that godly black woman literally had her prayer closet. She literally changed her closet and turned it into a prayer room. It was just unbelievable. And you and I need a prayer closet. We need a prayer room to go to and get alone with God and pray. And what a difference it will make. And I find, dear ones in church this morning, I find when I take time to pray and just get along with God, wherever that might be, and just pray and talk to Him, that my day goes so much better. And I accomplish so much more than I ever could without that prayer time. And my spirit and my attitude and my response to family and to others is so much better. So we need that set aside Time to pray. Did you know Jesus did this? Right? Listen to this amazing verse in uh, Mark chapter uh, 1, verse 35. It says, Now in the morning, having risen up a great while before daylight, Jesus went out and he departed to a solitary or a quiet place. Notice what he did. And there he prayed. If Jesus, the Son of God, the perfect Son of God, God, man, took time to pray, I think you and I need to, right? I think we do, it really do. You say, well, I'm too busy. 
I'm too busy to schedule time in to pray. Well, then I say you're too busy. Check out Jesus' busy schedule if you think your life is busy. Check out Jesus' busy schedule for a little while. And you'll discover soon that your busyness is nothing compared to his busyness. From daylight to dawn for Jesus. No one was busier than Jesus, yet he scheduled time out alone with the Father to pray. We sometimes think, well, I don't feel very close to Jesus. <clears throat> well, who moved? Hmm? Who moved? Did Jesus move away from you? No, he's right there. You moved away from him. That's why you're not close to him. You need to get back with him, right? You and I either choose to move to him or not to move to him. And that's why James wrote, draw, draw near to God, and what? He will draw near to you. Isn't that amazing? So you and I have to initiate. He's not going to come to you. You have to initiate. You have to draw near to him, and then he comes to you. As you draw near to him in James 4, 8. We have to move towards him. And one of the best ways to do that, that I know of, is to draw near to him through prayer. I don't know any better way to get to know Jesus, get near him, than through prayer in my life. We sometimes wonder why we have little power in our Christian lives. And why we have little victories over the enemy, over fear and worry and doubt and anger and lust and unforgiveness, etc. And little answers to prayer. We wonder why. Do you think it might be because we don't pray? We don't pray. Or we don't pray very much. Huh? Little prayer, little power. Much prayer, much power. Some of you may wear the brand name Gap clothes, right? I have a shirt made by Gap. Big deal, huh? Well, let, let, let me remind you of Gap. Let, let Gap, G-A-P, remind you of this. God answers prayer. Remember that? Gap. God answers prayer. The truth to go here is this, a focused time of prayer each day, when we step away from the world and we just talk to God alone, <coughs> is indispensable for your Christian life to advance where it should be more closer to Jesus. You and I simply cannot grow spiritually without a consistent and a persistent effort to pray. The Christian life is simply not sustainable without it. You're, you're, you're not going to sustain it. You're going to be defeated. You don't have a consistent prayer life. You're going to get depressed. You're going to get discouraged. You're going to have all these negative thoughts in your mind. And you're just going to want to give up if you don't have that intimate prayer time with the Lord. Along with the excuse of thinking I'm too busy, I think another problem, uh, why, why people don't develop this habit of daily prayer is that most Christians have never been taught how to pray. Right? If you are, are serious about prayer and is scheduled in a focused time of prayer, I'm going to challenge you at the end of the service to pick up some prayer guides that have helped me over the years that are out there for you. Procedure number three, commit to self-denial daily. Commit to self-denial daily. This is sometimes a tough one. For starters here, let me say this. Learning to delay gratification is one of life's essential lessons. It can be a hard lesson, but it's an essential lesson. You cannot have a successful marriage, or be a great parent, or maintain good health, or establish financial stability, or become educated unless you are willing to delay gratification. So too, you cannot be successful at living the Christian life if you are not willing and able to practice self-denial or delay gratification. And yes, there are benefits in life to practicing self-denial or delayed gratification, if you would. You become more patient with your spouse and with your kids. And you say no to anger. And you say yes to love and to gentleness. You exercise more regularly. You get better at saying no to snacks that you don't need. Your, your personal finances improve because you establish and stick to a budget more closely 
The benefits go on and on and on to self-denial or delayed gratification. For 2,000 years, Christians have been agreeing and disagreeing about what it means to be a Christian, debating and arguing various topics and points here and there. But some things, beloved, are indisputably essential to being a Christian. And self-denial is one of them. Self-denial is one of them. And Satan can really defeat us in this whole area. Because he knows most of us are really weak at this point. And we really need the help of the Holy Spirit in our lives with this one. Jesus himself said to his disciples, If anyone wishes to come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. Luke 9, 23. The cross of surrender, the cross of total obedience and of self-denial and sacrifice for his cause and for the spread of the gospel. Again, quoting Matthew Kelly in his engaging book I've been reading called Rediscover Jesus, he wrote these words. Self-denial has an incredible impact upon a human being. It refines the soul, sharpens the senses, strengthens the will, and tempers our desires. So start your journey of self-denial or self-control by saying no to yourself at least once a day. Just start this journey of self-denial with that. Perhaps you are craving a Coke or your fifth cup of coffee of the day. Say no and have water instead. Perhaps you don't want to exercise. Say no to your laziness and exercise. Even if it's a 20 minute walk a day. Just do it, the Nike sports brand <coughs> tells us. Clean up your house, your cluttered basement, <coughs> or your garage. Get out and do it. Just do it. <coughs> right? Self-denial. Staying close to Jesus means delaying or delving into the Gospels, having a focused time of prayer daily, denying of self or the fruit of the Spirit, self-control. Is there any area of our lives that we need to exhibit more self-denial, more self-control, and say no to in our lives? Your life will be infinitely better if you learn to deny yourself and just say no. Procedure number four, practice spontaneous prayer. I mentioned the importance of focused prayer every day, and that's most important. And yet, spontaneous prayer is important as well. If you're going to stay close to Jesus, you need to be talking with him through the day, just as you would your spouse or your kids or your friends, or your schoolmates, whoever, or people you work with, you, you talk with them throughout the day. And so spontaneous prayer needs to be a part of my day. The Apostle Paul, who was a man devoted to prayer, penned these words, Rejoice always, pray constantly. Giving thanks in all circumstances, 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 to 18. Now that doesn't mean we're always uttering a prayer. It simply means as something or someone comes to our mind, we offer up a short prayer. All through our days, be conversing with God as you go about your day. Spontaneous prayers. Be conversing with with God throughout your day. It's simply being an attitude of prayer throughout the day. We don't just, you know, wake up in the morning and have a little prayer and then we put God on the shelf the rest of the day. No, we throughout the day. And it's wonderful to talk to him throughout the day. Wherever I am, wherever I'm doing. To know that Jesus is right there with me and I can talk with him. It's amazing to have such a friend as Jesus. It sticks closer than a brother to us and I can talk to him 24-7. Isn't that amazing? What a joy to be a Christian. You see, if you're not a Christian, you don't have that privilege yet until you become a Christian. But what a joy it is when you become a Christian to know that Jesus is there with you. He's in the midst. He's with you 24-7. You can talk to him about anything on your heart. Some, sometimes it might be just praising him for something. Or offering some worship to him for who he is. Or thanking him for something. Or confessing something to him. Or asking him for something. Or interceding for someone else. A spontaneous, short prayer as you go. Prayer. Pray as you go, right? 
I do when I wake up in the morning or I drive, my eyes open, right? Or I go for my prayer walks or I'm in my office through the day. Things come to my mind, I pray about them. Oftentimes it's you people I'm praying for, your families, our community, my family. The spontaneous prayer we're talking about here as you go about your day. You need help at work to get along with somebody better, or do your work better, or at school, you need help with something, just talk to the Lord about it as you go about your day. As you're driving to work, as you're driving to school, just as you're in the home as a mom with your kids, just talk to the Lord as you go about your day. It's so amazing. It really is. Nothing better, really. But what will spur this, this spontaneous, casual, conversational prayer? What will spur that on with? You know what it is? It's that focused, daily time of prayer that I mentioned about earlier. That prayer, closet time of prayer that will bring the God awareness to you more so that you'll be thinking about you more throughout the day. Because if you don't have that scheduled, focused time of prayer along with the Lord, you're not going to be connecting with Him much the rest of the day. You really are. Right? So it begins right there, does it not? you see that? Anybody agree with me on that one? You're, you're awake and yeah. learn on that one and agree? Good. Okay. Good class. Just checking in on you. <laughs> All right. So, so, so there's, there's this uh, spontaneous prayer, casual prayer, spurred on by our, 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 our focused time of prayer along with the Lord. And so let, let's learn to talk to God in the moments of our day, spontaneously, casually, like a small child talks or speaks to his father or her father. So too, we speak to our Heavenly Father spontaneously as we journey through each day as a follower of Jesus. And you will discover that your best days are those days when you stay connected with God throughout the day in conversational prayer with Him. You really will. So dear Christian, does your life need a fresh start as we close this morning? Does your Christian life need a fresh start in this start of this new year of 2024? And if so, I challenge you to be bold and I challenge you to embrace these four procedures like your life depended upon it. Right? And I hope you wrote them down. And, and, and really, to be honest, your Christian life and staying close to Jesus in 2023 does depend upon your choosing to commit to, with enthusiasm, these life-changing new procedures or habits. So choose to delve into the Gospels and to have a focused time of prayer daily and to commit to self-denial and to self-control daily and then to practice spontaneous prayer throughout your day. And then as we do, Let's believe God to take our Christian lives to newer heights and newer commitments and newer growth and newer victories and newer joys and newer territories, newer adventures with God in 2023 than we've ever experienced before. You want that? You want that in your life today? Let's make it our passion. Let's make it our prayer. Let's make it our passion to get close to Jesus more than ever before in 2023. And if you adhere to these procedures, I'll guarantee that you'll get closer to Jesus. You really will. Based upon the authority of the Word of God. You will indeed make huge inroads in closing the gap to get closer to Jesus than ever before. So let's go do them. Right? Let's go do them, team, church. And let's experience the radical change that they will make in 2023 and beyond. God's glory. Amen? Let's pray. Before I close in prayer, with every head bowed, every eye closed, I just want to ask you here this morning, just between you and the Lord, our worship team can come. We just want to give the Lord the, the praise in the house of the Lord here today. If you're here this morning and God has spoken to you about getting closer to Jesus, and you, and you, and you want that, you want to commit to that, I, I want to pray for you, I really do, because we need this together. We need, we're in this together, right? This thing called Christian life. We need each other. That's why you need the church, by the way. And, and, and don't believe
believe the lies out there that you don't need church. That you can stay within church. Because you need the church and I need the church. And so I want to pray for you. If you want to, if that's your passion this morning to stay closer to Jesus in 2020, just lift up your hand and put it down. Yeah, many, many hands go up. Wonderful. Praise God for every one of your hands. Just put them up and slip them down. Wow, thank you God for that this morning. Father, I do want to pray this morning for everyone of these dear people, your, your precious people, the church of Jesus Christ here at Cornerstone, that raised their hand here today as a public commitment and acknowledgement that they want to get closer to Jesus than ever before in 2023. God, I pray.